Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Modern Living with Dr. Angela. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Chester. Today, we are talking about the importance of communication in relationships. Now, this is not just about the relationship when you think of, you know, my man or my woman. We're talking about relationships as a whole. Everyone can better communicate. Everyone should be able to convey the message that they need to convey to the next party. So what are some things that we can do to make sure that not only are we conveying our message properly, but we're also being a great communicator in return. So communication is about effective communication. Communication is about exchanging information. It's about understanding the emotion as well as the intention behind the information that is being exchanged. Not only do you need to know, again, how to convey the message, but you want to be understood. So how do you do that? One thing that you can do is stop and listen. Now, I know that this is one of those things that's easier said than done, but you'll be surprised at how important this step actually is. So how many times have you heard someone say that? Right? I know. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Uh, Listeners, we're also uh, doing this live on Periscope. So if you are on Periscope, please, by all means, join me. I am, of course, at Dr. Angela Chester. So we want you to be able to enjoy our platform and our information no matter how you are listening. So how many times have you heard someone say, you know, you're just not listening to me? So if we hear people say that, then that must mean that it's really an an important step. So what do you need to do? You need to literally stop your actions. That's why usually when you have something uh, bad news to deliver or, or you have really extremely good news to deliver, you ask the person, are you sitting down? Why? Because you want them to be able to pay attention. Well, if it's bad news, you don't want them to trip and fall. But even for good news, you don't want them to do anything that's going to harm themselves. Now, when you're knee deep in a situation and it just seems like it's really, really, really going off into horrible land, it's hard to sometimes calm yourself down. So even if you have to take a step back, the action that you want to take is to stop. And then you want to redirect and start to listen as best you can. Number two, you want to force yourself to hear. I know you shouldn't have to force yourself to hear, but you'll be surprised at the number of people who simply don't do this very simple step. So you've stopped talking for the moment But guess what? Your head is still swirling around about everything that you want to say in rebuttal. You're thinking about that point that they just made and boy, what you have to say about that particular comment. Or sometimes you're just thinking about that little jab that you want to say, that little snipe little comment that you want to get in there, but you can't do that. Well, I guess you could, but you shouldn't do that. So if you're trying to have better communication, you can't do that anymore, okay? So if you're not really hearing what's being said, how can you possibly actually deal with what the person is saying to you? If you're not listening to what's being said, how can you effectively communicate your hopes, dreams, wishes, your rebuttal to what's being addressed to you if you're not listening. So force yourself to stop, hear, listen. Now, one of the things that we teach um, as therapists is for is for the person to reflect. It's called reflection. And you've probably heard about it and didn't realize it, or perhaps you've seen it in a movie or two if you watch those types of movies. But the reflection is when the person who is receiving the information rearticulates it to the person that is giving the information. So you ask the question and then restate. So are you asking me to do one, two, three? So are you telling me that one, two, three is going to happen? Now, 
You need to be extremely careful here about your tone and about your, your body language because many times what happens is, is that the person kind of has attitude when they're saying what they believe that they heard. So are you telling me? Okay, we don't want you to do that because then that's just going to escalate the situation even if there was no escalation intended. So you can't hear with an offended ear. If someone is telling you something, imagine how hard it was for them to get the courage to tell you in the first place. Now, you know if you're one of those hard people to talk to. You know if you're one of those people who speak your mind or you have no problem telling it like it is. Sometimes it's hard for a particular type of person to talk to you. So if you know that you're that type of person and you know that the person that's trying to talk to you is going to have a difficult time talking to you, try not to beat them up before the, the message has been, has been delivered. Now, if you're going with someone who can toe to toe with you, they can, they can dish it and they can take it, then that's fine. Then perhaps their tone is exactly what they want you to hear because that's what they heard. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky is deciphering tone and body language and all of that. And that's a podcast for a different day. So we want to make sure that when we're reflecting that what you're doing is you're giving back to the person who gave you the information, what you believe you heard them say. Now, if they did not understand it correctly, make sure that you Rearticulate your point, your message, but you use different words. So if I were to say, okay, well, let's go. Let's go. Where are we going? Okay. Let me rearticulate. You said that you wanted to go to the store, right? I'm ready. Come on, let's go. So now the person knows, oh, we're getting ready to go to the store because I expressed an interest in going to the store. Great. They're on your page. Now that's the most basic example. When it gets into something dealing with a life situation or perhaps even your job, it can become a little bit more complex than that. So if you can, within your conversation, have pauses, have breaks, so that you're able to actually make sure that you're on the same page with the person that you're talking to. Well, thanks listeners for joining us. We need to take a very short break. And when we get back, we will continue talking about the importance of communication in a relationship. We'll be back right after this. Modern Living with Dr. Angela. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Chester. Today we are talking about the, the importance of communication in relationships, and that is in any and all relationships. I try my very best that when it's something that's very broad, to use the broadest word I can. When it's something that's dealing with marriage or a very uh, long-term relationship, then I try to use the word marriage there so that you know that I'm talking about a very solid relationship. Alrighty. Now, we were discussing some things or ways in which we can make communication more effective. So just to kind of recap, stop and listen. Number two, force yourself to hear. Number three, pay attention to nonverbal signals. Now, one of the best examples of this is if you think of your mother. Uh, you've probably learned her nonverbals as a child and you didn't realize that that's what you were doing because most of our communication is done in this way. It's, it's not what we say, but how we say what we're saying. If you remember the hand on the hip, the 
the kind of hmm uh, squinty eye uh, I refer to as you know the mama look and every mom has her own look so but everyone understands what I mean when I say that mama look that if you don't stop doing that what are you doing kind of look that you get um, everyone also understands the universal huh Everyone knows that kind of scrunching up your face and kind of turning your head to one side, kind of like the little puppy, that that means that you're confused, that you have no idea what's going on. And those are our non-verbals. They are extremely important, and especially when we're trying to convey something to a group of people. Not everyone may understand your words when you're given a presentation, but someone is definitely going to understand that body language that you're giving. So with non-verbal non communication, you're looking at things such as tone of voice, the inflection in your voice, the eye contact if you're making it or if you're not making eye contact. You're also looking at distance or how a person um, is in relationship to your personal space. So when someone's really interested in what you have to say, they have a tendency to kind of lean in. They want to become more engaged because they're more engrossed in what you're saying and what you're doing. When someone doesn't care, like they really and truly do not care, then they're going to kind of back up from you. Like, what? Not, uh, you know, and they want to distance themselves from you. Also, if they start to fold their arms, that's creating a nonverbal barrier between yourself and the person who's giving you the information that you don't want to hear. So pay attention to these very small things. There are many, many, many talks, especially when it comes to sexual nonverbals. For example, they'll say, you know, when a woman's totally into you, she'll flip your hair, she'll flip her hair or, you know, toss her bangs a little bit. She'll try to be kind of sexy or kind of lean into you. Um, she'll expose her neck just a little bit. All of these types of things that you may not necessarily um, be aware that you're doing them, but your body is trying to communicate what your brain is trying to get your mouth to say. Now you may say, well, I haven't done any of those things. I don't flip my hair. Um, I don't expose my neck. Well, maybe your thing is, is that you may turn around so that he can see your backside. Or you may kind of lead in and prop up the girls a little bit if you feel that that's your best asset. But when it comes to body language, be it that it's sexual or non-sexual, there are going to be things that we do just innately that convey the message that if you were confused in any way, this should be the communication a cheat sheet, if you will, to let you know exactly what the person's trying to say. With nonverbals, you can tell a conversation that's going on even across the room. If you've seen the, you know, remember the talk to the hand, uh, when someone, uh, no, mm -mm, no, or the finger, no, 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 or any of those things, you know that, oh, that poor guy, that poor woman, they're being turned down, the head drop, hmm, yes, all of those things are nonverbals. So make sure that you are definitely paying attention to those as well as those words that someone is actually trying to convey to you. Number four, focus, 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 focus. Be in the moment of now, right now, when you're having the conversation with whomever it is that you're having that conversation with. You cannot communicate effectively when you're multitasking. I'm sorry, you may think that you can, and I know that multitasking is something that um, many people have tried to convey to you is a very positive thing, but when you're multitasking, you're dividing your attention, you're dividing your time amongst as many things as you're trying to accomplish in that particular moment. So if you're trying to do four things, your attention is divided in four different ways and they're not always equally divided because some things need your immediate attention some things just need let's say 10% of your attention some things may need 20% 50% so on and so forth so you want to not multitask when you're having a really important conversation with 
other people. You want to make sure that you're paying attention to them. Look into their eyes. Make sure that you're hearing, that you're listening, that you're understanding exactly what it is that you want them to say. So you want them to focus, listen, be right here. Now, some ways that speakers do this is, is that they may change their tone of voice because they're trying to help you focus. So if I was doing, if you've been to any of my workshops, then you know that I kind of do this sometimes depending on the subject matter, especially if I'm doing something with encouragement, motivation, or breast cancer, is that we're talking and it's like, do you know how awesome my God is? Do you understand that though this particular thing has happened and this particular thing is going on, it doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. Why? Because God is always there. Because you want the person to not just get caught up in the emotion, to not just get caught up in the woo of it all, but you want to bring them back down. And when they settle, they're settling on the thing that you just made them concentrate on. Don't multitask. Don't be on your phone. Give them your undivided attention and let them know that what they're saying is important to you because guess what when it's your turn you're definitely going to want them to pay attention to you well we need to take a very short break i thank you for listening to modern living with dr angela we'll be back right after this for joining us for another episode of Modern Living with Dr. Angela. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Chester. Today we're talking about the importance of communication in a relationship. So what are some tips? What are some help tips that I can possibly give you? One is to avoid interrupting and try to redirect the conversation to you. Guess what? No one likes the Mr. or Mrs. or Ms. Me Too. So when they're talking and it's, well, you know, this happened at work. Oh my God, me too. I can't believe no one cares about yours right now. It's not about you. It's about the person that's trying to share the information with you. So your job at that particular moment is to be an awesome support team, is to sit back for a moment, get out of your own little world, and to listen to what they have to say and to what's going on with them and make sure that they understand that you are actually trying to be a really great friend or sister or whatever it is that you are to them, but that you're trying to be a support system for them. Number two, now, when it comes to our bodies, um, many people forget that our brain is divided into the left and right hemispheres, but they're somewhat opposite of what we or what many people believe them to be. Now, the left side of your brain is what controls the primary processing for your uh, speech comprehension as well as for your emotions. So if the left side of your brain is what controls that or deals with that, it controls the right side of your brain. The left side of your brain controls the right side of your brain. The right side of your brain controls the left side of your brain. I know God totally has a sense of humor. Totally 100% has a sense of humor. So with that being said, if what you're trying to tickle, if you will, is the left side of your brain, when you're listening to someone, turn your right ear towards the person that you're trying to actually concentrate and listen to. Many times in certain professions, 
professions, you will notice that the person will say, say that again. Okay. They're not trying to mimic any particular thing. It's just that they know that they're looking for a certain amount of detail and they're trying to make sure that not only are they listening to your words, but they're also listening to your intention and they're also paying attention to everything that you're trying to convey to them, your tone of voice, the pitch of your voice. Remember, we just talked about that. So turn your right ear. What is something else that you can do? Pause to collect your thoughts. Guess what? You're supposed to think before you speak. That's why many, many professors or professional people, you may notice it seems like it takes them forever to say what they need to say. That in many instances is a good thing because they want to make sure that the, the vocabulary that they're using, their word choice is the best possible use of words to convey the message or the point that they're trying to make with you. Now, if you've ever heard um, President Obama speak when it's a very candid interview, you'll notice that he tends to speak very slowly. He doesn't always talk with a certain rhythm. He may even occasionally say, uh, but it's because he's trying to make sure that he's using the right word choice. He wants to make sure that when you go back and listen to that sound bite, that you're getting a piece of information. All right. Now it doesn't say that just because you speak slowly, that you're highly intelligent. It just means that in some situations, the best thing for you to do is to slow down and make sure that you're saying exactly what it is that you need to say. Sometimes the best thing you can do is say nothing at all. Pause long enough to actually gather your thoughts and or your composure and make sure that you, you know, you don't want to bust a blood vessel. You're not trying to, you know, have a meltdown in any way, shape or form. I don't want to have to enroll you in, you know, one of my anger management classes because you weren't able to control your emotion. So control your emotion enough that you're able to pause enough to collect your thoughts and then convey your message. Well, thank you everyone for listening to another episode of Modern Living with Dr. Angela. We hope that you have enjoyed the show today. And as always, may the Lord continue to bless you in all that you do. And may you continue to live under his grace and mercy. Have an awesome, awesome day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.